Martin and Sergey Devryanchenko, you have a man who's used to being in the main event. He has vied for a championship on three different occasions. 0 for 3. He knows now at 36 that he has to put it together, but he's in tough tonight against the 27-year-old Carlos Adamas, who is 20 and 1 with 16 knockouts. And for Adamas, his only loss to date was his only world title opportunity. Back in November 2019, he was favored to defeat Patrick Teixeira and win the super welterweight title, that being 154. But it was Adamas who suffered the fights, only knocked down the first of his career. And that, well, cost him the fight. He has since then notched two KO wins. And he is coming into this fight knowing that Dervianchenko represents the, well, best fighter that he has faced to this point. And for Dervianchenko, as we talk about, he is really in an all or nothing gamble in this fight. After starting his career 13 and 0, he lost three out of his last four all in title fights. In October, he arose from a first round knockdown in 2018 and lost a 12 round split decision to Daniel Jacobs in a title fight. Then, after a 12 round win over Jack Kokai, he fought Gennady Golovkin again for a vacant 160 pound title. Again, goes down, makes it a competitive fight, but then comes up short. And so tonight, Sergey Dervianchenko wants to prove that, hey, he wants one more chance. He's worthy of one more opportunity. And if he does get a fourth chance, he will make the most of it as we go to the tail of the tape for this pivotal matchup at 160 pounds. And one of the key numbers is the age of Dervianchenko, which you've alluded to at 36. How much is left and what can he still do? Now for Adamas, at 159 and a half, that's the highest he's weighed as a professional. Jumping into a new weight class against a tough cookie. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans from Staples Center here in Los Angeles, California, Premier Boxing Champions presents our next attraction in the ring. Once again, brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the president, Mauricio Suleiman, supervisor, Jose Suleiman. Our judges scoring from ringside, all from California. Jerry Cantu, Tiffany Clinton, and Damian Walton. And we introduce our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Eddie Hernandez Sr. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBC middleweight world title eliminator. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and blue trim, hailing from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. His record stands at 20 wins, one loss, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the hard hitting number nine ranked 154 pound world contender. Introducing Caballo Bronco, Carlos Adames. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round attraction, wearing black trunks with bronze trim, fighting out of Brooklyn, New York by way of Nikolaev, Ukraine. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 159 and one half pounds, with a record of 13 wins, three losses. He has 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former world title challenger and the current WBC number two ranked middleweight in the world, introducing Sergey, the technician, Derevyanchenko. Once again, our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Eddie Hernandez, Sr. Your mouthpiece? Let's see your Mouthpiece? All right, gentlemen, I've been over the rules with you both. You're professionals. I expect you to conduct yourself as such. Touch gloves? Good luck.
Eddie Hernandez Sr. has been a referee for 18 years, working his 280th professional fight. Mentioned Dervianchenko's fight against Gennady Golovkin. Many thought he should have beaten Triple G and in fact it got an automatic third try at 160 pound title against Jamal Charlo, losing that as well. And, and Al, for the second consecutive fight, Dervianchenko coming in off a career long layoff. Yeah, this is the longest, a 15 month layoff. The other fight uh, for Charlo was a 14 month layoff. And at age 36, we're going to have to watch it. Early in the fight, Two things. Dervianchenko, you know, has been knocked down twice in the first round by Jacobs and Golovkin. So you've got to be careful. And the other thing to note, Adamas, who normally switches sometimes from righty to lefty, he started the fight as a lefty. And Adamas fighting for the first time in Los Angeles, rated top 10 at 154 by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine. But again, Abner making the most or wanting to make the most of this opportunity and does so with that straight left to the midsection, a victory over a guy like Dervianchenko, and that puts him in good standing at 160 with title aspirations. Oh yeah, and he should take advantage, especially in this uh, first round, you know, knowing that Dervianchenko's a slow starter, the guy that takes his time. So, you know, if you're Adamas and, and you got the power that you got, you want to put your your punches together and you know possibly even hurt Dervichenko as Al mentioned he's been down before in the first round twice twice so big fights but also came back and arguably yeah. won yeah. those fights <laughs> yeah it's not you got to do a lot to discourage Dervichenko I'm wondering I don't you know he has two great boxing guys in his corner uh, Gary Stark uh, Jr. and Andre Rogier I think they're probably all thinking we didn't really expect the Damas to start as a lefty, but they said they were sparring with lefties to prepare for this. So what you're saying is that Ismail Salas, the 64-year-old uh, trainer for Adamas, a former head coach of Cuba's Guantanamo amateur team for 15 years who trained three-time Olympic heavyweight gold medalist Felix Savon, among many others, came up with an interesting game plan for Adamas. He did. This is the second fight he's had with Adamas. And uh, let's see how this works out for him. Early. Final minute of the opening round. It's Adamas on the back foot along the ropes, moving to his left. And I see what Adamas is doing. He's, he's waiting, obviously, for Dervinchenko to come in. You know, open up and, and catch him. I saw that that short uppercut, and then right when uh, Dervinchenko was pulling back, he caught him with the overhand right as well. And Dervinchenko with the one-two to the the body, the sternum area of Dervinchenko. Sorry, overhand left since he's a softball. <laughs> we knew what you meant. Yeah. Mm, beautiful straight. Stop at the bell, guys. Stop at the bell. We'll look at what these two men need to do in this fight, keys to victory. We mentioned uh, beware early, don't get into a situation where you get hurt early on. Uh, combinations, he's an excellent combination puncher. That'll come when he can close the distance, which he hasn't yet. And the overhand right is probably his best power weapon in this fight. He's got a good one. As for Adamas, Dervinchenko doesn't like to fight going back. He, he, he wants to push him backwards if he can. He's got a terrific uppercut, and that will work once Dervinchenko's on the inside. Don't fade against Patrick Teixeira. It is one title shot. He was doing well in that fight. He got tired toward the end of the fight. They say they fixed that with Bob Santos as his new conditioning trainer. But... You know who's really tired in the Adamus family? His dad sired 35 <laughs> children, <laughs> <Yeah>. 23 <laughs> brothers, 12 sisters. Wow. There are 35 members of the Adamus family. And you wonder why Carlos Adamus is a fighter? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And just just getting to the dinner table. I mean, I mean literally, scrapping for scraps, Al. Yeah. 
Uh. And, and the style that Adamas is using now is less hurrying too. You know, you don't because he's he's known to be a pressure fighter, and that's what happened uh, in that fight where he lost. He got tired because he put in a lot of pressure, he threw a lot of punches, uh, but he faded in the later rounds. So now he's just waiting for the right time, waiting for opportunities. And just to put a bow on it, 11 of the 35 kids are from the same father and mother. Okay. 11. <laughs> that that only 11. That's still a lot. <laughs> that, but that helps put it in perspective. A minute gone here in the second. The jab from Adamas. Trying to oh, lead. Right uppercut that scores. Nicely executed. And Adamas beginning to open up on Devianchenko. Going to the body. Devianchenko on the ropes. And Devianchenko in trouble here in round two. The Ukrainian Olympian who didn't take up the sport until he was 28 years of age. I turned pro at 28. And he is in trouble here against Adamas. You know, we talk about him coming out as a lefty. He's been, you know, he doesn't lose power when he becomes a lefty Adamas. Some fighters do, and we're seeing that. And it's really beautiful to see how, how well placed his punches are, are put. The great distance. Oh, it catches him with the check hook there. And Dervianchenko now coming forward, bullying Adamas, the veteran, trying to get back on track. And now Dervianchenko landing a couple of lefts to Adamas. And Dervianchenko making the rally here in the final minute, although stopped with that right hand in his tracks. But wow, what a fight, what a round. When Dervianchenko can get that kind of distance, he's effective on the inside. But but Adamas is making him miss a lot. It was the wake-up call Dervianchenko needed. Oh, and another solid right by Adamas. A spirited scrap. And it's only the second round. You want a Devian Chengel to get started faster? He's been forced to by Carlos Adamas. Oh, my big left hook by Devian Chengel. I'll tell you, this fight is going to settle into a oh, real war. And Adamas backed up by Devian Chengel. Adamas, what a second round! A big deep breath taken by Dervianchenko and his family in attendance. <laughs> the right uppercut, we talked about that in the keys to victory. It's a good punch for Adamas. He threw it from pretty far back where he normally wouldn't throw it, but it landed perfectly, and that got Dervianchenko in trouble. But later on, Sergey coming back, he was able to close the distance a little bit, using that jab, landing a straight right hand, even as he was getting pushed backward uh, and, and lost his balance. But Ser Dervianchenko did some excellent work on the inside toward the end of that round. So that was a... a a tremendous second round. Then go right to the body. Let's go. Second round comprised an Adamas assault followed by a Sergey surge. And here we are. Round number three scheduled for 10 at 160 pounds. Again, Adamas rated in the top 10 at 154. But boy, really daring to be great by taking on a, a man who many believe is the best fighter never to have won a championship yeah, battle. Yeah, very, very good point you can, it's that you can make a case for that. You know, both men have defensive issues. Opponents have landed 40% of their power punches on Dervianchenko and 35% on Adamas. And we're seeing why in this fight. Abner, the right uppercut, and there it is again by Adamas, although gets countered with the right hook and that left hand is low. Yeah, Dervianchenko trying to get in you know that jab trying to set up the jab to walk in to get in but you know it's a little too slow uh adamas timing that jab and adamas orthodox now yes uh, he switched back to righty and oh, lands right. with the right hand from a distance dervianchenko this is not going to be a no. good fight for him he's got to get on the inside which he will again trust me and he was trying to. And he lands a jab and a hook, and now Adama says the veteran, and I say veteran because he is 36, did have 24 fights in the quasi-pro World Series of Boxing, went 23 and one. His only loss came against current 154-pound titleist Brian Castaño as they both dig to the body. 
And I see what, you know, Adamas is doing. Great job from the outside. That's where you want to keep Dervinchenko. Dervinchenko is really dangerous once he gets inside. He works the body really good. Adamas, well placed, punches, great distance. Final minute of the third. Feigning there with Darwin Checo. He yeah, well when he faints. Yeah, it's good, very good point out there. That and trying to jab his way in would be two good ideas for him. The Adamas jab has been effective when he's used it. Work out of it, guys. Work out of it. Stop! Sit back, sit back, don't punch, don't punch. Adamas uh, sparred with uh, Luis Arias, who recently beat Jared Hurd at 154 pounds. That really was helpful to him. And, it, and in his formative years as a pro, he also sparred regularly with Terrence Crawford back yeah. in 2017. So he's had plenty of opportunity to sharpen his arm. And fighting a guy like Derby and Chenko will do that as well after. As we close out the third round with Derby and Chenko surging forward. Oh, left hook to the body lands for Adamas. Let's go to Jim Gray. Well, thank you very much. I'm back here with Tank Davis. He's getting his hands wrapped. Tank, when you know your opponent, Cruz, wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, how do you keep your composure and pick your spots? Uh, just, you know, um, stay, stay stay put and you know uh, not try to rush things and you know try to counter his mistakes how much did sparring with Sean Porter who's a wild fighter who, who's much bigger uh, but that type of fighter how how much did that prepare you for this I mean it, it prepared me like confident wise you know just being in there with somebody like Sean Porter and be able to you know stand my ground you know it, it felt um, great you know it, it just gave me you know um, something you know extra to, to add to my preparation by you know giving me my confidence and things like that how can you be unaffected by the change in opponent from Romero to Cruz and, and not overlook Cruz we've seen what happened when Lopez overlooked his opponent and ended up getting beat uh I'm a person that you know always you know um take every opponent you know um like a threat you know so it really not you know uh anything different from, you know, Cruz and, you know, uh, Roly. Oh. I, I, I think that both of them, you know, come in to fight, and I know that Cruz won't come to fight, and, you know, I'm well prepared to go out to the round. Tank, we look forward to seeing you here in L.A. tonight. Not Baltimore, not Atlanta, the big show here in L.A. Look forward to it. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Back out to you, Marl. Adamas and Dervianchenko detonating on each other here to kick off round four, and both of them end up on the canvas in a heap. No wrestling. No wrestling huh? Referee Hernandez saying no wrestling. You don't say. <laughs> Here's the jab from Devianchenko. We talked about him trying to use that not so much as a big scoring weapon, but to work his way on the inside. Devinchenko has a really good right hand when he places well. He, he has the opportunity when Adamas gives it to him right there. Oh, well, double jab yeah. followed by the right hand from Adamas, who said he had to prove people wrong at 147, proved them wrong at 154, and he says he is here to make a statement at 160. And one of the things that Damas has done so well in this fight is stay off the ropes. He's been in the center of the ring, and you don't give Dervianchenko a chance to rake you over the coals with those combos when you're in the center of the ring. Adamas stopping Dervianchenko in his tracks with the jab, and then Dervianchenko going to the body, followed by the left hook upstairs. A pitched battle here in the fourth. And Dervianchenko is finding a little home for that right hand. So is Adamas. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, it's, it's hard to stay inside because Adamas just gives him angles. He pushes him, uh, you know, away right away. He, he creates a space. Stop, stop, stop. Go punch, go punch. Hey, watch this. Hey, look at him, look at him. You know, we've fought, 
Adamus, uh, Adamus, along with Irving Chico, is a good combination puncher. We've seen some of that here tonight. Not, he hasn't gotten a lot of great combinations, but he's thrown some good ones. Dervianchenko sticking the jab. Using it as he were a fencer trying to set up the big right hand. Lands the jab, Adamus on the ropes, coming forward now with a double pump jab of his own. A little bit of everything on display through four rounds. It's been a good one between Dervianchenko and Adamus. And a great right hand of the bell. Both men would go down to the canvas as a uh, nice right hand by Dervianchenko and then Adamus kind of pushing forward and they're both off balance. And that looked like one of the linebackers from uh, college football yesterday or the pros today making a tackle. And uh, Adamus is, is going to shoot out. Uh, there he lands a nice left hand on the inside. And we'll... As he throws the right uppercut at Damas, which is what he's trying to do, Dervianchenko trying to counter with the right hand. That's an example of Adamas throwing that right from a little too far out. He could get countered. You can start seeing it on him. Stay to the right. Set up your right hand. Over and right. Use your jab. Stop giving me no. Damn. Damage. Dervianchenko has been living in Brooklyn since 2014 and at times has resembled the proverbial Brooklyn brawler in this fight looking to make things tough for Adamus, but Adamus, as we begin the fifth schedule for 10, Abner, what's impressed you the most by the 27-year-old Adamus here in with his, well, the, the most experienced opponent of his career? Well, you know, obviously the way he is boxing tonight, you know, he's picking his shots really well. Uh, the jab, the boxing, you know, not creating mistakes by staying on the ropes. You know, different variety of punches. And there we see great boxing skills. Both of them just sitting down, throwing with bad intentions, especially Dervianchenko, but some dazzling defense on display by Adamus. Adamus has done a very good job of slipping those big punches, but boy, Dervianchenko is close to landing one of those really nice right hands. And, and that's what Dervianchenko has to do. He has to go in forward. He has to push Adamus. You know, we mentioned Adamus fades. Well, we've seen him in the past fade, so, you know, this might be the case tonight. Who knows? But you got to take those chances if you're Dervianchenko. Derbianchenko's 13 wins have come inside the distance. 16 of Adama's 20 victories have come thanks to his power. So we expected fistic fireworks, and we are getting a dose of that here in the fifth. And here's where Derbianchenko sets up shop. Beautiful double left hook. And a yeah, beautiful job by Derbianchenko with Adamas along the ropes. Adamus knew he had to get out of there, and he did finally after some damage was done. Yeah, Dervianchenko making this a dog fight, and he had to. Dervianchenko being warned by the referees, never been deducted a point for a foul, but he knows how important this fight is. He speaks about his motivation, not only his family, his wife and child at ringside, but the fact that he knows if he wants an improbable fourth world title opportunity, he has to conquer Carlos Adamas. And this has been the kind of round Dervianchenko wanted in this fight. Certainly the best round he's had uh, in which he got a lot done when Adamas was against the ropes. Dervianchenko known for his durability, the activity, the body attack, and even his underrated footwork. But now he has to use his feet to get away from the ropes. Both of them exchanging hellacious shots. This is just what we thought this fight would be. Middleweight mayhem between Sergei Dervianchenko, Carlos Adamas throwing big bombs in Los Angeles. <laughs> Well, that round was filled with action. We could have picked any spot and found like this. Them exchanging right hands, then the left hook by Dervianchenko. He, it's a better range for Dervianchenko to punch right there.
Yeah, way better, but he also exposed to uppercuts. You understand me? Yeah. Give me the angle. You gotta give me angles. Right, and use your jab. You gotta Got it? lower when you get close to him. You're too high when you get close to him. Keep your hands up, go to the body, and step around him with the angle. No, no. We're doing. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. Just remember that back foot, nice and steady, and close the rounds strong. A little more alive. Let's go. 64 year old Ismail Salas. Working with Carlos Adamas, Gary Stark Jr., 62-year-old, working with Sergei Dervianchenko and both Dervianchenko and Adamas, putting work in thus far as we begin the second half of this 10-round contest at 160 pounds. In the last round, just a bit of foreshadowing. Again, we saw um, Adamas throw that uppercut from too far back. He could still get countered when he does that. It's been a pitch to battle here in La La Land. Let's go to our unofficial score, Steve Farrod. How do you have it after five rounds? Mo, uh, one through four. Adamas kept uh, Derevanchenko off balance by knocking him off balance. Big change in the fifth, a clear round for Derevyanchenko, but I have 49-46 for Adonis at this point with half the fight still to go. Adonis sticks the jab. Derevyanchenko inching forward, taking small steps, trying to get within range, lands the left. Counter right misses for Adonis. But boy, at that mid-range and inside, Abner, these two are going at it. The, uh, and Derevyanchenko has to keep trying. He has to keep moving forward. I know he's going to get exposed here and there for uppercuts, you know, for punches from Adamas. But again, that's the type of do uh, fight, a dog fight that Derevyanchenko has to look for. And a reminder that, and we're seeing the number of punches thrown going down a little bit for both men, but for Adamas especially, we mentioned he took, got Bob Santos on board to help with conditioning. It is one that a really important fight against Teixeira. He did fade in the later rounds there. He's hoping not to repeat that in this fight. Adamas also a family man. He and his wife, two daughters, two sons, both men. Of course, fighting for their pride, for their family, for their legacy, and for the opportunity to make championship money. Now we see Adamas turning as a left-hander, which he, he's been doing really good as a left-hander. He started the fight from a southpaw stance and really dictated terms in that first frame. Where again, he tries that uppercut. When it lands, it's great, but it's also Man, dangerous. He's got to be careful with his hand yeah. positioning. Yep. As Dervianchenko going upstairs, hands are low, below his waist. There's a change here. Adamas is looking like he's not as sharp with his punches as he was, and I think he's starting to get a little tired. We'll see. Usually he starts methodically, didn't do that in his fight, and we are now going to round seven. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, here with Isak Cruz, and Raul will translate. Uh, Isak, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for you, and you have said you want to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Why do you want to engage in that type of fight? Es una es un momento de la vida que que es que es, es la, la oportunidad de tu vida este y tú dices que quieres enfrentarte a, 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 en frente cómo por qué quieres hacer esa pelea en frente en frente es un estilo que es muy difícil de de corregir y no yo vengo a hacer mi pelea vengo a dar lo mejor para que el público sea el ganador you said that's a style kind of it's it's hard to uh, to fix or not to fix but to to fix uh, to change because I came to do my fight and that's all you guys are going to see you guys can see a good fight. Thank you. Best of luck. We'll talk to you afterwards. Muchas gracias. Muchas no, gracias. I don't thank you. All right, Moro, back out to you. Thank you very much, Jim. As uh, we continue with this middleweight attraction, this is round number seven, scheduled for ten and. Dervianchenko pumping the jab out to begin this round. I mentioned I thought Adamas maybe was, was getting a little fatigued. We'll find out in this round coming up. Adamas 
has no touch or touchdowns. Did you hear me on Sunday? <laughs> See? It's you Sunday. Go. Football on the brink. Has no <laughs> knockouts <laughs> past the sixth round while Derby and Chenko. He has knockouts in the eighth go, and twelfth go, rounds of his career. Let him go. Let him go. And Adam is holding Gervinchenko on the inside. And things are tightening up. And yeah, Steve, Steve Farhood believes things are getting closer. Let him go, let him and go. And the question will be now, we have two things going on. We've got Adam maybe throwing lesser punches, but also Gervinchenko throwing a few less. Here's a 36-year-old against a fighter who we know has had stamina issues in, major, in one major fight. Oh, what a right cross that landed for Adamas. And the jab by Adamas. We talk about Dorvinchenko getting discouraged, you know, getting knocked down the first round, you know, uh, losing rounds here and there, but, but you don't see it. You don't see it. This guy does not show it. He keeps coming he's, as he doing, he's doing right now. Great body worker. And as Al pointed, you know, Adamas fading. You can see, you can tell right away. Once you start holding on a fighter, trying to wrestle with him, yeah, that shows that's a, that's a, you showing that you're fatigued. And the power punches, both men uh, landing at a pretty good rate. Adamas landing at a better rate. And the gap closing yeah. when it turns the power punches landed. Now, Adamas has, you know, in this round, has been pretty precise with his punches from the outside, a little bit more so. Uh, again, neither man is throwing a lot. Only 23 punches for Adamas and not 20 for Dervianchenko. And Dervianchenko using the stick more as he absorbed another left hook to the body and fired with one. And Dervianchenko continues to try to find the right range and ends up clinching here with Adamas. This was kind of a wasted round, though. I think for Dervianchenko, he needed to get in there and work hard, and I don't know that he did that. And he just got hit with the left hook, as with 30 seconds left in the center of the ring, Dervianchenko and Adamas fainting, bobbing, weaving, throwing some short punches on the inside, the uppercut by Dervianchenko. In trench hey, warfare. Yeah, I gotta point out that Adamas is, is smart. You know, I talked about the clinching, grabbing, you know, that's the way of stopping Dervinchenko right in the strike and not letting him punch. Man, I, Adamas playing with fire in terms of yeah. his hands and their position. Showing, great showing so far. That's the one I like. What are you giving him is ahí, the latest ahí. thing. Vamos. That's boxing. Come on. Drink Oye, some water, take some cara. air. Look at my face. You can't take this guy out? So take him out. The only thing is that you got to box. Don't get crazy. Keep with your boxing and keep touching him up, okay? I'm going to get trouble. Let's pick that up. Sir, when, when the referee breaks, one step, don't give him time to set up. Right hand, left hook. You hear me? Jab, right hand, left hook. We need, we need this. We need these two rounds big. Let's go. Come on. How you feel? Let's go. Let's go. Adama's trainer, Ismail Salas, wants him to continue to box. And he's doing that with the jab. Jab to the body by Dervianchenko. And Dervianchenko pops Adama's head back with a jab upstairs. You know, we talked about uh, Adama's holding here. He was docked two points in his last fight for excessive holding. So uh, he wants to make sure he doesn't repeat that. No knockdowns thus far, but Dervianchenko's face proof that this has been a tough battle, and he's used to being in tough battles. Again, having vied for a championship on three different occasions. Look out, the guys. Yeah, he's a rugged competitor in there. He's looking for room in there, and, and Adamas again, really holding on. Yeah, neutralizing right there, uh, Adamas. But you know, the referee's not saying anything, so he's gonna no. keep doing it. Let him right. go, let him go, let him go. I nice right uppercut on the inside, Soriel by no, Dervianchenko. I think that seventh round no it was pivotal. Steve Farman scored it for uh, Adamas. It, it was a fairly close round, could easily have gone to Adamas. And that, that could be a very important round in this fight. You hear Stark Jr. telling Dervianchenko, we need these final rounds. Sharp 
jab by Adamas, but yet still playing. We fired that right hand downstairs, and uh, Yervianchenko able to land those short left hooks to the face. Yeah, he's looking for a big one to get in there. And there, there's a double left hook from Yervianchenko. That's what he needs to do. He needs to stay inside there. He's kind of giving the space to Adamas, which Gary Stark told him, don't do that. Don't punch, don't punch. Step back. Yeah, I know, but it's more Adamas moving. It's, you know, Adamas not giving him the opportunity. Despite him being tired, either you will neutralize by grabbing on you, or you will just you will just turn. And now Adama showcasing that boxing and that sharp right hand to the face. And again, if you're trained by the former head coach of Cuba's Guantanamo amateur team, as Dervianchenko comes back, you're going to know a thing or two about the sweet science. That's for sure. You know, that little sequence on the inside was a really good sequence for Dervianchenko. Let's see if he can repeat that. And there he's trying. He's pushing it oh, yeah. against, against the road. Pushing him away, creating some space, but just momentarily. Both trade jabs, and yeah, Adama's doing a good job of boxing. Lead left hook that caught Dervianchenko. This has been a good, a good round from Dervianchenko for the most part, but Adamas has done some good work as well. Oh, big left hooks on the inside. Adamas had some eye-catching punches. Big overhand right that got there uh, and trying to, to do some domination punching right after that. And then later in the round, again, the right hand would get in. Uh, the best punches in that round were his right hands and then some of the left hooks by Dervinchenko. It was a fairly close round. Very important. You got to stay close to him, Sergey. Mm -hmm. You give him room to punch. That's when he punches. Don't give him room to punch. Stay close to him. Work up the middle and throw those shots to the body, then to the head. Keep throwing right hands at him. And keep your hands up. Give me two, three right hands on the road, sir. Come on. Andre Rogier right doesn't the, want Dervianchenko to give Adamas room to throw. He wants him to keep it close. Dervianchenko told us that he felt his power would prove to be the difference. Can that power bring him dividends here in the final two rounds? It's round number nine between Sergei Dervianchenko and Carlos Adamas, a pivotal matchup at 160 pounds. And Dervianchenko showcasing his body, uh, boxing skills before being countered by Adamas. Yeah, when he uses that jab, he can he can show us some of that. Yeah, and he gets in some somewhat of a rhythm on a bounce on his feet. Talking about Dervianchenko, he plays his punches really good. Adamas with a sweeping left hook. Ironically, as we look at Steve's unofficial scoring, and he feels Adamas is taking charge a bit. And he's uh, doing it here in round nine. Yeah, Dervinchenko's never been 10 rounds. He's been 12 rounds, as we We're pointed out again. several We're times. Uh, Adamas has been uh, 10 rounds twice. He's won both those fights. Lost his only fight in 12 against the Sheriff. Of course, this one's scheduled for 10. Adamas had 280 amateur fights. We talk about Dervianchenko being an Olympian with over 300 amateur fights, so they know boxing, but we've seen some brawling as well. And referee Hernandez telling them to keep it clean, and boy, they've got to make it rough and tumble here. Dervianchenko, especially on the inside where he wants to be, but Adamas showing the veteran Craft there by holding yeah, on. Really better, and he's holding on right. He's turning him when he has to. And he finally got a warning. <laughs> he finally did. First one. Wow, both of them landing upstairs with heavy shots. Step back. Don't punch. Don't punch. Don't punch. Let go. Let go. Let go. Punch. Final 60 seconds of round nine. Jab by Dervianchenko and Adamas falling to his knees. Dervianchenko really wishes this was a 12-round fight. Based on just everything that's going on here, he would love those extra two rounds. And oh, he Adamus, them. right cross. And Adamus coming forward again. 
again this ball. And, and, and defense. And a left hook by Adamas. I was just going to say, though, despite their Vincenco, you know, catching on, moving them forward, you know, giving Adamas shot here and there. Adamas closes this, this, the rounds really well. Yeah, and he's been doing a great job of defending against a lot of these punches by Dervianchenko. Yeah, like great, that right there. Great head movement by Adamas. Oh. Not there as Dervianchenko lands, and here comes Adamas' 10th and final round of what has been a great scrap. A rumble, touch my, but I want to see a lot of bravas. Brava, brava, oh, brava. Don't fall yeah. out of, don't fall out of position. Keep your left foot first. You're crossing over and let's run. Yervinchenko at his moments. There's a beautiful yeah. straight right hand and the jab. That's a, and but what does Adamas do? He lands his own right hand. Uh, demonstration of the combination punching for Devinchenko. We haven't seen much of that. And on the inside, Adamas doing good work putting putting together his best combinations of the fight. But then Devinchenko punctuating it with the left hook. Great action in the last round. And we are set for the last three minutes. Round number 10. How competitive has the fight been according to Shostak's Allen? I know numbers just show a part of the story. Not all of it is that right hand landed for Adamas, but I mean, take a look at the numbers out. Yeah, you know, over a, a 500 punches thrown by Adamas, 495. And Adamas supposedly, according to show stats, has landed three more punches <laughs> than Dervinchenko. And of course, remember, it's how those punches are spaced in rounds, and, and that, you know, uh, that that's not cast in stone. Uh, but, it, you know, this is an, it's going to be an interesting fight to score. Uh, a lot of close rounds in the last three rounds. Those rounds have been close, and they, they could be pivotal ones. I feel like the, despite Dermanchenko being the aggressive uh, fighter, knowing that you know he needs to pressure, um, Adamas has been landing the cleaner, more effective punches. You could make a strong case for that. Dervianchenko oh. bearing down on Adamas, but Adamas comfortable in the corner, but gets clipped with the right and left, and he comes back with the left and right. Sensational stub here in the final round. Full chopping right hand, and Adamas now really utilizing the holding tactic because he doesn't want it to let Dervinchenko get those rallies on the inside. But Adamas is landing his share as well. The back, don't punch, don't punch the back. Scoring could be uh, very interesting at the end of this one. Our unofficial scorer has Adamas ahead. Adamas again showcasing his uh, defense while Dervianchenko wants to put together these combinations and try to find a way to put Adamas down on the canvas. A couple of short left hooks getting in by Dervianchenko. Gonna, these rounds are close. Right hand, Adamas has been down just once. That came in his long loss to Patrick Teixeira. Adamas coming up to 160, ranked in the top 10 at 154, hoping to seize the opportunity, hoping to make an impressive statement here against one of the best fighters at 160 pounds. And with 20 seconds left, Sergei Dervianchenko trying to land a big shot, but for Carlos Adamas, an impressive effort here. The 27-year-old going the distance with 36-year-old Sergei Dervianchenko. That was a great fight, great competitive fight. I think a fight where obviously Carlos Adames will take a lot from it, will learn from the veteran Dervinchenko. And I call him veteran, the veteran despite him only having uh, 16 fights as a pro, but he's fought them all.
And the question will be whether this man, Carlos Adamas, who landed some very, very showy punches throughout this fight, especially early in the match. How did that middle section of the fight go from seven through nine? And, uh, did he control that as Steve Farhood thought he did? Now look at the numbers. They're pretty close in terms of what was landed. Uh, both men pretty active with 569, 562. Uh, the 42% of Adamas' power punches that landed uh, was very impressive. Uh, and, and judges better see that bottom line as yeah, well. Yeah, body shots, Dervinchenko doing a little bit better job down there, which we kind of expected. We'll go inside the ropes uh, on this match. And early on, the lefty Adamas, he came out, remember, as a left-hander. And that uppercut, which he landed excellent uh, uppercuts early in the fight. Then Dervinchenko was able to get on the inside in the third, fourth, fifth rounds and do a little work. But Adamas from the outside still continued to land these showy punches. The overhand right was a big weapon. And Dervinchenko with uh, good combinations. That sequence there showed the back and forth action that we had in this fight in many spots. Whatever Adamas coming up from 154, however the decision ends up, he showed himself to be a very worthy middleweight against one of the best middleweights around. Anxious moments at ringside for Sergei Dervianchenko's family, his wife, Irina, his son, Matvey. And there is the Ukrainian Olympian showing the vestiges of what was another battle. He's always in battles, always giving the best of his abilities. The judges haven't always been his best friends, but we'll find out tonight if what he did was enough. Or will it belong to Carlos Adamas? Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jerry Cantu scores about 95 to 95, even a draw. Overruled by judges, Tiffany Clinton. She scores about 97, 93. Damian Walton sees it 96 to 94 in favor of the winner of the WBC middleweight world title eliminator, Caballo Bronco Carlos Adames. Middleweight division has a new player in 27-year-old Carlos Adames who just knocked off the highly respected Sergey Dervianchenko. Fine effort by him. Tough one for this veteran, uh, Sergei Dervinchenko at 36 with his brain trust, Gary Stark and uh, Andre Roger. It's hard for him to, to deal with this disappointment, but an excellent performance by Adamas. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, Morrow, thank you very much. Carlos, congratulations. Felix de Jesus will translate for us. Carlos, this was a, a very tough back and forth fight. Uh, how would you assess this decision and why were you so successful at being able to, in, in many ways, particularly early, control the fight? Una pelea difícil frente a, a Sergey. Eh, ¿Cómo o qué cambiaste para controlar esta pelea eh, en round por round que estaba eh, tú eh, ganando? Primeramente, buenas noches a todos. Quiero dar las gracias a Dios, a mi equipo de trabajo, a De Veranchenko por darme la oportunidad de pelear con él. Yo sé que es un gran boxeador, me siento muy agradecido. Y gracias a Dios, aquí vine eh, mi disciplina en el gimnasio. Trabajé con mi equipo y, me puse, y puse de toda mi decisión. Me puse en oración con Dios. Le di gracias a Dios por todo y a toda mi gente que me apoyaron. Me siento muy bien y muy agradecido con Dios y con todos ustedes. First of all, good evening to everybody and thanks for coming. Uh, I want to thank my team. I also want to thank uh, Devinchenko for the fight that he gave me and most of all, God. I want to thank God for uh, today that this, the discipline that I showed there in the ring was all due to God and everything I did today by my team.
What do you think this means to have beaten somebody of this pedigree, somebody who has been in the ring with champions and, and has fought so well? Do you feel now that you're ready to graduate and compete now for a title? ¿Qué significa ganarle a un boxeador de este pedigree que tiene el y si ya está preparado para un chance de un campeonato mundial? Significa mucho para mí en mi carrera porque ya es un gran reto ganarle a un boxeador de ese alto calibre para mí es un gran reto mi disciplina en el gimnasio me demuestra que yo soy uno de los mejores como le dije en la rueda de prensa yo también soy uno de los mejores que no me subestimara eh, ahora quiero enfrentar a un grande campeón de eso de la división y espero que me den la oportunidad también no this was a great fight with a great fighter in Sergey and this just gives me an opportunity to move on the discipline that I showed in the gym will help me I said it at the press conference that I am ready and please do not uh, subestimate me I'm going to be such a great fighter too at this weight when you say move on you want to stay at 160 or move on from 160 bueno como puede ver domino las dos divisiones la 160 y la 54 en cualquiera que me dé la oportunidad por el campeonato mundial es mi meta yeah, as you can see I dominate both the 154 and the 160 wherever they give me the opportunity to fight against for the championship I'll do it congratulations thank you gracias a todos por venir thank you Okay, uh, Uri will translate for us. Uh, this was a very tough back and forth fight. Um, what did you think of how Carlos was able to perform? Did you feel coming into this fight that this would be the type of fight that you would get? Ты, ты ожидал то, что он будет боксировать с тобой так? Да, конечно, я ожидал, что он будет так боксировать, но uh, это был uh, uh, ровный, ровный тяжелый бой. Yes, I expect uh, my opponent going to fight the same style. It was uh, nothing special for me. It was a quality fight. What was the difference in your mind in this fight? He different. Is, uh, he stays south, southpaw. He stayed southpaw. Yeah, yeah. That was the difference, that yeah. he stayed southpaw. You're 37 years old at this point. What, what is it that you would like to do now? Uh, what will you assess now with your career moving forward? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm a little bit rest and uh, come back, uh, come back gym. And uh, I think uh, what I must do, what I must do. Yeah, uh, I love box. Uh, I love, uh, I love uh, the show. Uh, thank you so much, uh, El Heyman. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Kit Connolly. Uh, thank you so much, uh, my team, Gary Stark, Andrew Gazier, uh, Karczynski Jr. Uh, thank you, my family. Uh, uh, thank you, all people. Yeah. You just said you love boxing, and we all love watching you box. We look forward to your next time in the ring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moro, back to you. Class act, amazing ambassador for the sport, Sergei Divyanchenko, another tough loss, but a huge victory for 27-year-old Carlos Adamas as we bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood, who will uh, take us through the scores of this dynamo from the Dominican Republic's biggest win. Mo, uh, first we'll look at the official cards. You see that it was a majority decision, pretty close fight on the cards. Adamus won the fight by winning the first four rounds on all three cards. Tervanchenko actually won the second half of the fight, but it wasn't enough to overcome that slow start, a problem he's always had. Judges agreed on eight of the ten rounds. You take a look at my card. I also had Adamus winning the first four rounds and uh, ending up 97-93, same as Tiffany Clinton. Uh, a clear win on my card for Adamus.